You are now about to begin the great adventure, the journey out of your mind. You will travel far beyond familiar reality into the level of transcendent awareness. You will leave behind you your ego, your beloved personality, which will be returned to you at the end of this voyage. The goal of this trip is ecstasy, to move outside the boundaries of normal perception and consciousness into the far reaches of your nervous system. As you begin this journey, it is important to remember the following basic trusts and beliefs. You must be ready to accept the possibility that there is an infinite range of awarenesses for which we now have no words. That awareness can expand beyond the range of your ego, yourself, your familiar identity, beyond everything you have learned, beyond your notions of space and time, beyond the differences which usually separate people from each other and from the world around them. You must remember that throughout human history, millions have made this voyage. A few, whom we call mystics, saints, or Buddhas, have made this experience endure and have communicated it to their fellow men. You must remember, too, that the experience is safe. At the very worst, you will end up the same person who entered this experience. All of the dangers which you have feared are unnecessary productions of your own mind. Whether you experience heaven or hell, remember that it is your mind which creates them. Avoid grasping the one or fleeing the other. You must maintain faith and trust in the potentiality of your own nervous system and the billion-year-old life process. With your ego left behind you, your brain can't go wrong. Try to keep the memory of a revered teacher or a trusted friend whose name can serve as guide and protection. Trust your divinity. Trust your brain. Trust your traveling companions. Whenever in doubt, Turn off your mind, relax, float downstream. In order for your consciousness to flow beyond the confines of the normal body ego, it is necessary to 
to undo the bonds which chain you to the external world, to dissolve the imprints your neurological camera has been carrying around. In other words, it is necessary to eliminate five major obstacles to a peaceful dying of the ego. Anxiety, desire, anger, doubt, and inertia. Eliminate anxious restlessness. Avoid unnecessary moving and talking. Instead, maintain a calm, relaxed awareness, keeping your body, your feelings, and your intellect still, like a quiet pool of water. Eliminate all selfish wishes or desires. There is no room for wants or needs in the state of ego transcendence. Instead, adopt an attitude of joyous acceptance of anything that might occur, an affirmation of the energy process which will sweep you along. Eliminate any anger or ill will or irritation that you may feel towards anyone because this will prevent letting go and tend to produce a negative experience. Instead, meditate on love and trust towards everyone, especially your traveling companions on this cosmic journey. Eliminate doubt and suspicious skepticism. A negative attitude will hold you back. Instead, meditate with serene confidence on the unimagined potentials of your nervous system and try to make contact with the basic life source that is within you. Finally, eliminate inertia and laziness. Maintain a state of calm alertness, ready at any moment to move your attention from one focus to another, ready to recognize the stages of the experience as you pass in and out of them. There are three main stages in this voyage. The first and most profound is called the experience of the clear light or the void. Here, you merge completely with the basic energy process. There are no thoughts, no images, no hallucinations, no pleasure or fear, no I to experience. The drop of water is merged in the ocean. There is energy, light, flow, the network of process. You are gone. All boundaries dissolve.
The second and longest phase is called the period of hallucination, of gain visions and revelations. A part of your ego has reasserted itself and a multitude of sounds, images, thoughts are created and dissipated at fantastic speed. Both heaven and hell, paradise or torture may be experienced. Both come from you. The third phase is that of re-entry or rebirth or re-imprinting where your ego strives to return to the body to rebuild its familiar everyday reality. As you reach unimagined levels of awareness, try to remember these three phases and try to recognize where you are. Do not attempt to control or rationalize the experience. Let it flow and enjoy the process. You will be returning soon enough all too soon. There is plenty of time for figuring it all out later. Turn your attention to your body. Try to become conscious of every cell in your body. Notice how various unusual sensations are pulsating through your limbs. The flow of the energy process may cause your body to tremble or to feel hot or cold or to feel pressure in your head. Just as a spaceship passes through the Earth's atmosphere and is subjected to unusual pressures before it can fly freely through space, so your consciousness, in separating from the physical frame of reference, may cause you to experience various unusual bodily sensations. These are the landmarks of the transition points of consciousness. They are no cause for alarm. Actually, they can be enjoyed with delight and pleasure. Become one with the trembling and the warm pulsing. Use it to get out of yourself. Die consciously. ways in which ego death may be experienced. You may dissolve like liquid or melt like wax or shatter like broken glass. or fragment like a mosaic or be pulled to pieces 
or disintegrate into vibrations of pure energy. Let happen whatever happens. Don't struggle or try to control. Accept, enjoy, merge. Exult, glorify, glorify, glorify. Coming back. You are now making the return voyage. You are returning to the world of familiar things. This is a crucial period. The things you see and the people around you may still seem different to you. Do not try to rush your re-entry. During the next few hours, Imprints will be formed which will determine how you will see things in the days to come. Be quiet and careful. Be aware of the photographs you are taking now with your neurological camera. Do not expose yourself to distraction. You may feel that you have supernormal powers, telepathy or clairvoyance. Do not make the mistake of thinking that these powers are yours through merit. They are merely the natural signs that you are in the re-entry phase. Recognize where you are. A Zen master said, My greatest miracle is that when I feel hungry, I eat. And when I feel thirsty, I drink.
As your spaceship re-enters the atmosphere of the planet, pay attention to where you are landing. This is a unique moment of free choice. The chess pieces which comprise your personality can be arranged in many different ways. You may yourself, as an artist, develop the games of your life and lend it animation. You may complicate it or enrich it as you please. An endless multiplicity in the games of life. That is just what life is when it is beautiful and happy. A game. One can also do all kinds of other things with it. Make a duty of it, or a battleground, or a prison. But that does not make it any prettier. As you re-enter, it is important to remember the effect of your own attitude. Choose consciously. Be aware of where you are going as you return to routine life. Be impartial. Do not re-enter into your old robot out of fear. Do not rush back with desire or craving. Be detached. Choose your new self freely, consciously. You have five centers of conscious functioning. The thinking center will make its own new imprint. Your feeling center will make its own new imprint. Your moving center will make its own new imprint. Your sexual center will make its new imprint. Your instinctual center will make its new imprint.
the imprints you are now making will govern much of your life in the days to come. The imprints you are now making of other people will remain strong in the days to come. Don't rush. Don't grab. Don't hold on to any one pattern of thought or feeling. Two monks were walking near a brook. They met a girl unable to cross. The first monk picked the girl up and carried her over. They continued their walk in silence. That evening, the second monk finally turned to his companion and burst out. You know we are forbidden to even look at women, far less touch one. Why did you do that? The first monk replied, I set her down three hours ago. Are you still carrying her? Try to remain high as long as possible. If you have started to come down already, try to regain the transcendence of the earlier, most intense period. This will ensure a smooth, gradual re-entry. This is a precious opportunity for gaining insight and understanding. Do not waste it by rushing back to your familiar world out of desire or fear. In order to prevent or postpone the return, Meditate as follows. Think of your protective figure or guide as like the reflection of the moon in water, apparent yet non-existent, like illusion produced by magic. With this in mind, contemplate the figure tranquilly. Then, let the visualized form melt away, starting at the extremities. Meditate without thinking upon the void, clear light.
if you have not found liberation in this session, there is still time. Meditate as follows. The visions and hallucinations which you are now having indeed all phenomena are in their nature illusions however reality may appear to you in truth it is unreal. Dreams, apparitions, non-permanent, non-fixed. Do not be attached or afraid of the products of your own mind. If you take these illusory forms for reality, you will wander around in this confused existence. They are like dreams echoes, cities of clouds, mirages, mirrored forms, not real even for one moment. Hold one pointedly to that train of thought and the belief that your visions are real will be dissipated. The world will glow for you and liberation attained. A man dreamed he was a butterfly. He woke up. He said, Now, I do not know whether I am a man who dreams he is a butterfly or a butterfly who dreams he is a man. Sometime during this period, your spaceship may encounter turbulence as it re-enters the atmosphere of the earth. You may feel confused and bewildered. You may wonder about your sanity. You may look at your fellow voyagers and friends and sense that they cannot understand you. You may think, I am dead. What shall I do? and feel great misery, like a fish out of water. You may wonder if you will ever regain your normal self. 
Familiar places, relatives, people known to you appear now as in a dream or through a glass darkly. If you are having such experiences, thinking will be of no avail. So do not struggle to explain. This experience is the natural result of your own mental program. Such feelings are signs that you are in the third or return phase of the session. Trust your guide. Trust your companions. Trust the natural flow of the process. Recognize calmly, without distraction. A man traveling across a field encountered a tiger. He fled, the tiger after him. Coming to a precipice, he caught hold of the root of a wild vine and swung himself down over the edge. The tiger sniffed at him from above. Trembling, the man looked down to where, far below, another tiger was waiting to eat him. Only the vine sustained him. Two mice, one white, one black, little by little started to gnaw away the vine. The man saw a luscious strawberry near him. Grasping the vine with one hand, he plucked the strawberry with the other. How sweet it tasted. As you return from your psychedelic session, you see spread out before you the world, your former life, a planet full of fascinating possibilities, objects, and events. Each aspect of this return voyage can be a delightful discovery. Soon you will be re returning to take your place in worldly affairs. The key to re-entry is this. Take it easy, slowly, naturally. Enjoy every second. Don't rush. Don't be attached to your old games. Recognize that you are in the re-entry period. Everything you see and touch can glow with radiance. Each moment, a joyous discovery. <laughs> 